Can just five minutes a day of hopping make you a more efficient runner? So a study from Goethe University Frankfurt in Germany says yes, especially if you're running at faster paces. Today I'll break down what they found, what this means for runners, and exactly how to do it safely, including why you should not try to jump as high as possible. Hi, I'm Ralph, the Ageless Runner. I'm all about helping you run smarter, go longer, and stay ageless. Thank you for being here today. So running economy is like fuel efficiency for your car. It's how much oxygen you need to run at a given pace. Better economy means you can run farther or faster without working harder. Plyometric exercises like jumping or hopping help your muscles and tendons store and release energy more efficiently. But most plyometric exercises are long or require gym equipment. This study tested something refreshingly simple. Just five minutes a day of double-legged hopping, no gym required. So this research was a randomized controlled trial, again conducted at Goethe University Frankfurt in Germany. Researchers recruited 34 amateur runners with an average age of 29. Half of them added five minutes of double-legged hopping to their daily training for six weeks. The other half made no changes. The hopping protocol started with longer rest and fewer hops, gradually progressing to more sets of hopping with shorter breaks between each set. Then they measured three key things before and after the intervention, before and after the testing. Running economy at 10, 12, and 14 kilometers per hour. VO2 peak, which is a measure of aerobic fitness. And something called RER, respiratory exchange ratio, which measures fuel use, with specifically carbs versus fat. And here's what they found. Running economy, again, how well our bodies use oxygen when we run, improved significantly at 12 kilometers per hour and 14 kilometers per hour at faster paces. So this is roughly a 7 minute 30 second mile per mile pace to a 6 minute 50 second per mile pace. Now no improvement was seen at the slower pace, which is 10 kilometers per hour, which is roughly a 9 minute 40 second per mile pace. VO2 peak didn't change, so cardiovascular fitness stayed the same. RER, this respiratory exchange ratio, increased at the highest speeds, meaning more carbohydrates are used when running faster. I guess that's probably not too much of a surprise. So in plain English, this means hopping didn't make them fitter in cardiorespiratory sense, but it made them more efficient at using oxygen when running faster. So why only at faster speeds? Well, at those paces, your legs rely heavily on elastic recoil. Your tendons function like springs. Hopping trains this specific quality enhances tendon stiffness in a functional way so they return more energy with each stride. Imagine upgrading the springs in your shoes, but in this case the springs are your own legs. Here's the exact protocol from the study and I'll put the progression chart up on the screen so if you want to take a screenshot of it you can. So again they progress with fewer hopping in week one going up to more hopping by week six. So week one was five sets of 10 second hops with 50 seconds rest between sets. Week two went up to six sets of hopping with 40 seconds rest. Week three was eight sets of 10 second hops with 30 seconds rest between sets. Week four was 10 sets of 10 second hops with 20 seconds rest. Week five went up to 15 sets of 10 second hops with 10 seconds rest between each set. And week six was the same as week five, 15 sets of hopping with 10 seconds rest. Now, a couple things we're talking about form. Again, we're not trying to jump as high as we can. That's not the goal. Think quick, springy, rhythmic bounces like a pogo stick. You want to stay upright, keep your eyes forward, land softly on the balls of your feet with knees slightly bent. The idea here is to keep ground contact as short as possible, so it needs to feel elastic, not heavy. And try to use safe surfaces. Don't do what I did and jump on concrete. Use a track or grass or gym floor or maybe a carpeted floor in your home. Now, if you have issues with knees, ankles, or Achilles tendon, you know, start with fewer hops or swap in a jump rope. Now, a few considerations about the study. Again, it was small, and it focused on younger recreational runners. So we don't know how yet uh, older runners might respond, but tendon recoil advantages should be universal, should benefit all runners of all ages. And also, they didn't measure how long the benefits last after stopping. So if you do this and it works for you, well, keep it up. So there you have it. Five minutes a day of smart, rhythmic hopping could be your shortcut to better running economy. And again, running economy is how well our bodies use oxygen when we run. And this is especially true at faster paces. So would you try this? If so, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more ways to run smarter, go longer, and stay ageless. Thank you.